Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be discussing lesions to the basal ganglia. Now the basal ganglia is going to have the direct pathway, which is going to be excitatory, and the indirect pathway, which is going to be inhibitory. So by using these pathways, it is going to be modulating the molar cortex. The first lesion we're going to be discussing is going to be a lesion to the subthalamic nucleus, which is going to cause hemibilismus, which are going to be these involuntary, sudden, violent movements of the arms and the legs. Now, as you can see from this image, the subthalamic nucleus is going to be involved in the indirect pathway. If we have a lesion to the subthalamic nucleus, then the globus pallidus internus, which is located over here, is not going to be excited. So the normal function of the subthalamic nucleus is to send out glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, to increase the function of the globus pallidus internus. Now the normal function of the globus, globus pallidus internus is going to be to inhibit the thalamus. So if we don't have this excitation from the subthalamic nucleus, then the globus pallidus internus will not be able to inhibit the thalamus. As a result, the indirect pathway is going to be downregulated because the thalamus is still going to be able to stimulate the motor cortex because it does not have the inhibition from the globus pallidus internus. And this is ultimately going to cause hemibilismus, as we said earlier, which is going to be the sudden involuntary flailing movements of the arms and the legs. Now let's discuss the striatum. If we have a lesion to the striatum, that is going to result in Huntington's disease. The striatum is going to be made up by the putamen and the caudate. And as you can see from this image, the putamen and the caudate are going to be involved in the direct and the indirect pathway. So if we have a lesion to the striatum, then both of these pathways are going to be affected, and then we're going to have symptoms associated with both of these pathways. Now, because the indirect pathway is going to be downregulated, that is going to result in chordia, which are going to be these jerky involuntary movements. And because the direct pathway is going to be downregulated due to those lesions, then that is going to result in slowing down of movements. So in patients with Huntington disease, we're going to have slowing down of movements as well as chorea, which are going to be these involuntary jerky movements. Now let's discuss what happens if we have a unilateral lesion to the basal ganglia. Now unilateral lesions are going to present with contralateral signs. And the reason for this is because the motor cortex, in order to move our muscles, has the corticospinal tract going through the internal capsule, okay? So then it is going to decussate at the medulla to stimulate our muscles. So let's say that this is the right and this is the left. So if we damage the basal ganglia, so if we damaged the right basal ganglia, then this corticospinal tract, which is traveling through the internal capsule, is going to be damaged. And as a result, it is not going to be able to stimulate the muscles on the left side of the body. Because remember, the corticospinal tract is going to decussate at the medulla. So this is why if we have lesions to the basal ganglia, it is going to present with contralateral signs.